but ultimately it didn't happen. We'll never know if, if it would have been nominated uh, because the Academy just decided not to activate the category. Why did the Academy decide to scuttle the whole category? They had five films. The rule said we need five films. They had five films. And, and then they, they make the statement, oh, we're not going to have the category this year because we don't think the quality of these films is up to the standards to activate the category this year. Basically, we're breaking our own rules because these films aren't good enough. Okay, maybe that's true. Maybe that is really what happened behind those closed doors in the Academy where they don't let anybody see what they do. But you have to consider their statement about the musical category against, um, I would say, four facts. One of the films submitted was Matt Stone and Trey Parker's Team America. And Matt Stone and Trey Parker once showed up to the Academy Awards wearing dresses. And, which was really cool, but I don't think the Academy thought it was really cool. So they're like, okay, maybe those guys are gonna show up. Fact number two, Neil Young was another for Greendale, his movie Greendale, he was another nominee. He once didn't show up for the Academy Awards the last time he was nominated, so maybe that offended them. Fact number three, Home on the Range was the Disney film that was submitted, and it sucked. So maybe the Academy didn't want, you know, Neil Young to beat Disney uh, on their award ceremony. Fact number four, the remaining two films both uh, were created by Dan Mervish. Oh, he's Mr. Slam Dance punk guy, and uh, you know maybe they just didn't like Dan. And both of those films, their budgets put together, cost less than an Oscar gift bag. So what if one of these films went in? Then you know the whole world will know you don't have to make films the Hollywood way, and then you know life will be over. The, the, when I heard that the Academy actually rejected the the whole category, I was really surprised. And they had five films. That's what the rule said. Four out of five, of five of those films had Academy Award nominees in them, uh, including Dan's film, Open House, which has Sally Kellerman. Uh, the, for the Academy to say, we, we don't think the quality of the films is good enough this year, it's like, well, what does that say for the uh, nominations you gave to all the people who are in these films? You know, who, we'll never know if, uh, if it would have been uh, nominated uh, because the Academy just decided not to activate the category. So I think that pissed Dan off uh, or something. Well, the next call I got from him, uh, was, all right, now let's turn this into the Indie Musical Challenge. <laughs> and uh, this would be a whole campaign, basically drawing attention to Dan's film. Part of the reason I think we're doing the Indie Musical Challenge was because he still had a ghost of a chance, uh, actually a realistic chance, to get a Best Song nomination for Sally Kellerman, uh, who sings uh, Selling a Dream. Selling a Dream. But really, you know, on the surface, drawing attention to this idea that, hey, the Academy needs more films. Let's help the Academy have more films, which really, you know, is what the Indie Musical Challenge is about. Uh, but, of course, in indie film, it's really hard to separate the, uh, the P.T. Barnum aspects from the uh, charity aspects. You know, those tend to get wrapped up together. Right, okay. This is actually a pretty cool thing. I, forgot, I remember now that it was actually about, we're going to help you because you, you've got knowledge that these people can use. Dan Mervish got together all of these uh, people to back the Indie Musical Challenge. He called up Matt Stone, and Matt Stone got involved, and he called up uh, IFP and, and HBO, the Comedy Arts Festival, and all these people are basically behind this thing called the Indie Musical Challenge, so that if an independent filmmaker steps up and says, that's it, here's my script, I want to make a film, we can help them make the film, we have institutional help to make them make the film. And so if you want to find out more, you can go to uh, IndieMusicalChallenge.com. I, I remember thinking that you know, Sally Kellerman, you know, as a best song nominee, looked like a pretty good possibility, and think that you know that that's realistic. You know, they could do that even if they didn't uh, do do the other category. Even after they scuttled the category, basically people knew who Dan Mervish was. They knew who Open House was because there was all this press about this musical category and all this controversy. So Dan kept it going with the Indie Musical Challenge. Hollywood Reporter said that uh, Sally Kellerman's song uh, "Selling a Dream." was one of the top 16 contenders to get a Best Song nomination. And, uh, and that was basically still open. Best Musical was gone, but Best Song could still happen for Sally Kellerman. So uh, Dan basically just worked really hard to get lots and lots and lots of press. And then finally he got you know, the, the big Variety article. Two days after voting had closed for, <laughs> for that category. So uh, the Best Song nomination didn't happen either. But he was this close, this close. Of course, Dan, lifelong ambition, waiting to be phoned in the morning by his agent to be told he's got an Oscar nomination. Yes, but not having an agent, I have to settle for Gabe. Yes. It's an honor just to get a phone call on Dan? Oscar morning. Yes, the Oscar nomination has been announced. And, unfortunately, You didn't mention selling a dream from Open House. Yeah, that seems, that seems strange. Show them your shirt, It says right there. Yeah, yeah.
Yeah. It's an honor just to be eligible. So here I am with two of the stars from uh, Open House. We found out yesterday we didn't get a, an Oscar nomination. and Those bastards! It was a little rough. I thought we were an outside contender. Uh, for a best song nomination. Uh, I like the song so much, I wanted to think that we were. So, um, so what are we gonna do about it? A uh, sled? I can't say that I was crushed when we did not get nominated. I don't know if anybody was really expecting it, but it was fun. Yeah. We took our, yeah. our grievances to the sled. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people, they use court action and lawsuits. Yeah, but I think protests. we made our point. I think we did, yeah. I, think I think we did. So. I think we, did. I think we won the honorary sledding Oscar today. It was, it was a fun caper while it lasted. I guess what the story behind the, the category best musical is, that Disney had all these animated films and they had all this great music in them and stuff and they would always win the award for, for best score. And the composers who just did underscore, not like musical score, said, hey, this isn't fair. They're, you know, anyway, they broke off this special, you know, best musical category so that Disney could go over there and the composers, you know, who do underscore could have their, um, their own categories themselves. And then, so, of course, the rules are designed so in, in the way that Disney makes films. They make original musicals. They don't usually take another stage musical and make it animated. But Hollywood never makes live action musicals that way. But indie filmmakers do. So what we're going to see in this category a mix of animated films and indie films, like super high res, you know, computer animated cell animation from Disney with little, you know, mini DV uh, dogma aesthetic kind of films. And in fact, the rules that are, uh, that are in this category are so arcane and unusual. You, there's this thing called Dogma 95 that was invented a uh, long, long time ago. I think. 1995 actually and it's a bunch of rules that these European filmmakers made up that you had to follow to, to make a film it's like you can't use any artificial light you have to use the natural light that you find in the room you can't use uh, music from outside you have to make your music in front of the camera and you have to sacrifice a virgin on the fourth day or something anyway the, the Academy rules are oddly just like dogma it's like okay it, it gives you a stricture under which now you have to be creative within these boundaries and of course you know as it always is it makes you more creative if you have those kind of kind of boundaries so there could be some some really, really interesting films made under the rules of the Academy. So I'm hopeful that what we'll see is a sort of weird, it's basically turned into a dogma category. There, there is, I think, a chance for one year, whatever year it is, for a whole bunch of people to get together and say, we're all going to make musicals and one of us is going to win an Oscar. And that'll probably end up being a self-fulfilling prophecy. So it would be very fun to just go for total quantity. How many musicals can we possibly make in a year? Actually sounds pretty good. Your American Express with South American Excess. The Navy KFC just makes me depressed. I don't want your Big Mac and I don't want your Coke. Water for the Seas Victorian, no, maybe it's far off. But your empire is drunk and dumb. Drunk and dumb. Yes, your empire.